1990 West Virginia University football season was a time of reward and a time of heartbreak. Only a handful of starters returned to anchor a team that had made three straight bowl appearances. For the winningest coach in West Virginia football history, this season would prove to be the ultimate challenge. Only three starters returned on a defense that would have to mature quickly in the face of oncoming fire. The offense would be built around two returners who would try to generate some firepower of their own. However, the heart of this squad would be young players just learning the rigors of big time college football. Through the high times and the low times, through triumph and despair, 1990 will be remembered as an investment in the future. The 1990 WVU football highlights are presented by United National Bank. Preseason camp is a time of optimism and enthusiasm. Veterans renew old acquaintances and help teach newcomers a brand of football known as the Mountaineer Way. It is a formula comprised of many ingredients that over the years has proven to be a recipe for success. No player better exemplifies this philosophy than senior co-captain Dale Wolfley. My brother Ron was a co-captain. It's a great honor for me to keep the tradition of being a Mountaineer captain. But also along with being a captain comes the responsibility of teaching the work ethic to the younger guys and the team of what it means to be a Mountaineer on and off the field. It's a great pride. Two-a-day practice in early August is by far the most important aspect of our football program. This is the time where our older players have to assume a leadership role and teach our younger players what it takes to win. This is the time where we're up at 6 a.m. in the morning and go to bed at 10 p.m. at night and we work at football constantly every minute and every hour during the day. This is the time where they understand the work ethics of our program, the discipline of our program, the commitment of our program. On September 1st, a new decade of WVU football began at Mountaineer Field. Kent State learned early on this West Virginia team had plenty of big play potential. On the first offensive play, sophomore Garrett Ford rambled down the right side for a 57-yard touchdown. He would go on to score three more TDs this season and average more than four yards per carry. In the next series, Greg Jones hit newcomer Mike Baker with a seven-yard touchdown pass, and West Virginia was off to the races. In the second quarter, WVU patiently marched 74 yards in 11 plays. On second and goal, Jones dropped back and hit senior Rico Tyler with a touchdown pass. Then in the second half, Ed Hill was on the receiving end of a 32-yard pass play that gave WVU a first and goal at the one. That set up junior Michael Beasley's first touchdown as a Mountaineer. However, Kent State would not fold and scratched its way back into the game. But late in the fourth quarter, freshman John Jones in his first collegiate carry burst through the right side for a 32-yard touchdown blast. For added safety, senior captain Sam Wilson intercepted the last Kent State pass to wrap up the 35 to 24 Mountaineer win. In week two, the Maryland Terrapins came to Morgantown for a defensive battle they would not soon forget. The high-powered Terrapin offense was stifled in the first quarter by some ferocious Mountaineer hitting. But it was West Virginia who suffered the first major casualty in this battle. Greg Jones was tagged with a concussion and would be unable to play the entire second half. Out of the shadow stepped redshirt freshman Darren Stutzkel. The WVU defense helped the youngster thrive in this pressure-packed situation by holding the turf scoreless in the third stanza. Early in the fourth, Stutzkel led the way on a 58-yard drive that was capped off by a Brad Carroll field goal. In the next series, he hit sophomore James Jett on a 21-yard game. Then he teamed up with Beasley for a long gainer deep into Maryland territory. On third and goal, Studsko calmly dropped back and hit John Jones with a TD pass that gave the Mountaineers 
a 10-7 lead. But in the next series, on a third and 10 play with less than three minutes to go, the Terps converted on a 59-yard touchdown pass play. Maryland eked out a 14-10 victory, but the young Golden Blue squad gained valuable experience in a pressure cooker situation that would pay off down the road. Next up was a rejuvenated Louisville Cardinal team on the way to a 10-win season and a Fiesta Bowl victory. But they nearly met their match in Morgantown as the Mountaineer defense did not allow a touchdown the entire afternoon. In the second quarter, WVU drove the length of the field in 14 plays to set up a Rico Tyler touchdown. The Cardinals answered with a pair of field goals to pull within one point. Midway through the fourth quarter, kicker Brad Carroll found out the hard way that football is indeed a game of inches. That opened the door for Louisville as it cashed in on a late field goal and headed south, cradling a 9-7 victory. There are glorious moments in college football but everything seems to click. West Virginia experienced just such a moment on September 29th in Pittsburgh. Tailback Michael Beasley led the Golden Blue Barrage with 135 yards in the first half alone. Quarterback Greg Jones completed 16 passes on the day, including two first half touchdowns. John Jones turned in a solid performance in his first game on foreign soil. He averaged well over six yards per carry and scored two touchdowns. The Mountaineer defense had a sparkling day as well. It always seemed to find a way to make the big play, like this one when Cecil Doggett prevented a surefire touchdown with perfect timing. E.J. Wheeler, the senior linebacker from Mars, Pennsylvania, displayed some out of this world speed to prevent a pit touchdown on a fourth and goal play. Many players on both sides of the ball contributed to the 38-24 pummeling of the Panthers. But the gold star for the day went to Michael Beasley. He finished with 197 yards on 22 carries. That's the ninth best rushing performance in the history of Mountaineer football. I think the pick game showed that uh, we could be a great football team. Things just came together. I think uh, it was a total team effort and it was just really good to see that everybody just came together at one time, at one point, and at one place to just play one of the better games we've played so far. The next week at Virginia Tech, the Mountaineers quickly found themselves down seven points thanks to a 78-yard pokey pass play. That did not set well with freshman strong safety Mike Collins. So he picked off a hokey pass and raced 49 yards for the score. On the ensuing kickoff, John Murphy pounced on a tech fumble and WVU was back in business. Five plays later, Beasley started to his left, then reversed his field and simply refused to be denied this touchdown that gave the Mountaineers a seven point lead. But Tech fought back to take the lead in the second half. A great Jones touchdown run midway through the fourth quarter was not enough to prevent a 26-21 Hokey victory. Despite the loss, the golden blue bright spot on the day and on the year was senior punter Greg Herzog. On this day, he averaged 53 yards on seven punts and would go on to set school records for both single season and career punting. By season's end, he would rank fifth nationally with a 43.5 yard average. The next week against Cincinnati, five interceptions helped cement a 28 to 20 win for the Mountaineers. Junior free safety Darrell Whitmore had three pickoffs on the day, only one short of the all time school record. Offensively, Darren Studstill hooked up with James Jett on a spectacular 76 yard touchdown pass. This one would go in the books as the longest WVU pass play of the year. Senior fullback Rico Tyler picked up more than 100 yards in an awesome display of unrelenting power. 
This captain was an anchor on the offense all season long and would average nearly five yards per carry on the season. I've had the opportunity to play for an undefeated team who played for the national championship, two bowl teams in the Sun Bowl and the Gator Bowl, and outstanding memories of the state of West Virginia. I've had an opportunity to reach heights other players in the nation cannot even come close to. The friendships I've made here will last forever. The achievements I've made here will last forever. The people of West Virginia have been great to me, and I'll never forget them. To this point in the campaign, WVU was ranked among the nation's leaders in turnover ratio, having committed only four all season. But that glowing statistic was doused against the Boston College Eagles. Six Mountaineer giveaways were the key in a 27 to 14 loss. Despite two interceptions, Greg Jones turned in a solid performance. The highlight was a 68 yard pass play to James Jett that set up a Mountaineer touchdown. Michael Beasley had his second 100-yard game of the year and averaged better than five yards per carry. And Charlie Fedorko took center stage with four key catches on the afternoon. The turnover virus would not go away in time to battle bowl-bound Penn State. Three interceptions contributed to the 31-19 loss. However, Junior Ray Staten made one of the prettiest touchdown catches you'll ever see. Defensively, the Lions were held to only 246 yards of total offense and suffered four sacks at the hands of the Mountaineers. The next week at rain-swept Giant Stadium, West Virginia battled Mother Nature as well as the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Horrible weather or not, the Mountaineers came to play a football game and play they did. Greg Jones got the ball rolling with a first quarter TD pass to New Martinsville native Nate Ryan. Then in the fourth quarter, Charleston's John Jones blasted up the middle for a six yard touchdown. At that point, the Mountaineers defense clamped down as Steve Grant intercepted a Rutgers pass. In the very next series, Darrell Whitmore came up with his fourth interception of the year and scampered down to the 11. Moundsville native Alex Shook scored on the next play, which is fitting because every WVU point scored on this blustery day was tallied by a native of the state of West Virginia. Morgantown's Garrett Ford scored next with a dash through the left side, and Ripley's Mark Johnson booted his fourth conversion of the day as WVU posted a sweet 28-3 victory. On this rainy day in New Jersey, the Mountaineers played as if there was not a cloud in sight. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright. In the final home game against Syracuse, Leroy Axum got the ball rolling for West Virginia with a first quarter interception. Greg Jones capped off a 13 play drive with a touchdown that gave the Mountaineers a seven point lead. Second half, it was Axum again as he picked off his second pass of the day. But in the end, his heroics would be too little too late as seven WVU turnovers spelled the difference in the 31 to seven Syracuse win. With only four days rest, WVU traveled to South Carolina for a nationally televised Thanksgiving night matchup with the Gamecocks. After falling behind seven to three, it was time for West Virginia to attack. First, a long pass to James Jett. Then a strike to Ed Hill for a 15-yard gain. John Jones slashed through the middle for 20 yards to set up a first and goal. On the first play of the second quarter, Jones pounded off the right side to give WVU a 10-7 lead. Defensively, Steve Grant led the way for West Virginia. The junior linebacker from Miami was a one-man wall in the middle. 
He logged an incredible 21 tackles on the night. But his effort could not overcome a strange call that turned the tide of the game. On a fourth and five, Jones hit Jet for an apparent touchdown. But he was inexplicably ruled out of bounds and WVU was unable to score. That play took the wind out of the Golden Blue sails as the Gamecocks won this one 29 to 10. For the 1990 West Virginia squad, the final tally of four wins and seven losses was obviously a bitter disappointment. However, look at this season as an investment in the future. The game experience that this young team gathered in 1990 will pay big dividends in the years to come. Our 1990 squad was a very young, inexperienced football team. In reality, they were paying the debt for the 88 and 89 team that graduated 47 seniors. However, we are very optimistic toward our 1991 season because most all of our players return. We have a lot of veterans on our defensive football team. I believe we have 10 starters returning. And on offense, we have some awful good, strong offensive linemen. Uh, we have a chance to have the best running back crew we've ever had. And if the quarterback position solidifies itself, I think that West Virginia will be right back in the thick of things like they have been in the past. The hard lessons learned in 1990 will not be forgotten in 1991. 15 starters return to a team anxious to make its mark on the long, proud history of West Virginia football. It is a history built on a firm foundation of success. Years from now, the disappointment of 1990 will be looked upon as an exception and not the rule. This program is a winner. The hungry young team that traveled such a tough road in 1990 is now a year older, a year wiser, and a year stronger. However, the insatiable hunger they feast on this winter can be satisfied in only one way, by the taste of victory in 1991. The 1990 WVU football highlights have been presented by United National Bank. This has been a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation.